Yo, what's going on? Nothing. How are you, sir? Man, uh, pretty good. We're going to talk about getting involved in a commercial electrical company and what the expectations are. So we're going to kind of set the, uh, set the stage here. We've, uh, we've already gone through the interview process. They decided they want to hire us, not because we're smart, but because we need hands. We have no idea what we're doing. Or maybe you know a little bit, enough to get by, but you've never actually been an electrician. They're giving you a tool list. They're giving you uh, your hard hat, which is not going to be of your choosing. It's going to be going to be a company hard hat. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're not going to get to pick whether you get the full brim or you get the uh, the uh, mm, the bitch hard hat. So if you get the baseball cap style, politely ask for another one. Yeah, like that one. Yeah, you don't want that one. You want to if, if you do, they're going to say, oh, everyone's got this hard hat. Then you're going to get to the job site. You're the only guy that's going to have that hard hat. So this is this is a better full brim hard hat. It keeps the sun off your back. It keeps the water off your back. Um, it's it's just better. It's it's you you want this hard hat. Trust me. I can do this. Let's, screw ocean hard hats. Love the hard hats. You do this Rest with yours. Your own taxes, not paying tools. Come on. Show yeah, us yeah. how versatile yours is. Just turn around like this. Sit here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, safety glasses, always 100%. No, no tolerance. Zero tolerance for no safety glasses. You, you're wearing your safety glasses. All the time, they get foggy, which they really do. That's a bad excuse. Safety glasses don't get foggy unless it's actually like really humid where you're working in between temperature changes uh, drastically where you're going in in a freezer and then out of a freezer or something like that. There's exceptions for that. Um, it's humid. You go above a ceiling, you come down, uh, things fog up. Keep your safety glasses on your head. Keep your hard hat on your head. Next, work boots. Uh, They'd say you can do safety shoes, man. I didn't even know what safety shoes were before I became an inspector. I wear my safety shoes because I'm driving around in a Mustang. So getting out of a Mustang and work boots just looks strange. Also, it's kind of bulky. You're going to want boots anyway. You're going to be digging. You're going to be shoveling dirt, whatever you're doing. You don't want... What you got going on there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, you don't want dirt. In your shoes, you don't want them in your socks, which brings you to the next point. Bring two, three pairs of socks. Keep them in your car. My feet get wet, dude. I'm going home. I don't care. I don't care what it is. If your feet get wet, you can't continue to work. It's not It's not good. Go to the store and go get dry socks and go back to work. Don't work with wet feet. You, you're not going to be worth a flip for the next four or five days. You're going to get blisters. You're going to ruin your shoes. They're going to stink for the rest of forever. Um... There's a number of reasons why you don't want wet feet. Bring extra socks. And back to this, I forgot. This kind of cradles and hugs and supports better. And you get better stability. So when you're walking around rebar and stuff, you're less likely to break your ankles. Because this goes all the way up to your leg and kind of makes it all one piece. Um, boots are the way to go. Boot cut jeans are your friend now. If you don't have boot cut jeans and you got straight legs, you're going to get laughed at. Your boot cut jeans, uh, you're going to be wearing, uh, 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 what do you call it, layers. Layers, so uh, long sleeves, short sleeve over that, and then some kind of coat so you can take it off, put it on, whatever you got to do uh, throughout the day. That's pretty much what you're expected to wear. Um, any short socks you got, you can kiss those goodbye. You'll be buying the crew cut socks. Um and you're going to need a good sturdy belt, two-inch belt, leather, preferably. Um, hold your damn pants up. Jetline sucks, dude. You forget your belt, it's a bad day. Jetline, you're tying your you got the string right up against your waist. I've done it. We've all done it. Uh, make sure make sure you don't forget your belt. Put your safety glasses every day in your hard hat. 
What's up, Jeremy? Had a safety team manager. I threw a fit about how it had its backwards and stickers, and they got the head of the manufacturer said we could. I am the safety model for the night. There you go. Uh, you got glasses. You're going to be wearing side shields. Um, you're in, you know, production. You're in. You're going to be wearing hair nets, beard nets, all that stuff. So just depends on the nature of the job site. Sometimes the smock over all your clothes. Just depends on what you're doing. Uh, all I heard you say was urine. You're in. Yeah, you're in. I'm trying to get through this pretty quickly because there's a lot to talk about. So we're going to just be flying through all this. I got a couple of friends that are going to be starting their first time as an electrician or at least with a larger company trying to uh, set the, uh, the expectations. 100% cotton clothes. Yeah. What about gloves? Gloves is coming up. Gloves. They're going to issue you gloves. They're going to issue you a hard hat. They're going to issue a safety vest. You got to wear all that stuff. You show up without safety glasses, you're not going to get to work. You're going to the former will have extra ones, but you, it's not. It's not a good. It's not a good look. Don't forget your safety glasses. Don't forget your hard hat. Um. Don't forget your. Don't forget your gloves. All that stuff. Uh. Towards the end of before I started doing infrared, so. I went, I did construction for like six years, and I did infrared for like a year and a half, and then went back to construction. Right before I left construction the first time, they started issuing mandatory required gloves, and that's when they started coming out with that, uh, the Milwaukee started getting popular with the thinner style gloves, it was 100% glove. So they make these things, uh, I know them as squids, but they squeeze and they clip and they, they grab your gloves, they hang on your belt. I don't know if you've ever seen those. Those are pretty cool. But you're going to need gloves. These are too bulky to work in. This is good for moving material, which is what you're going to be doing for the first at least couple of weeks. You're going to be moving a lot of material. So make sure you have gloves. Uh, let's get to the tools. As, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as long as you show up with your safety Crocs and a pair of sunglasses, you're good to go. <laughs> so, uh, they're going to issue a tool list. Sorry, I was waiting for my kids to stop making noise. Uh, they're going to issue a tool list. It's going to be it's going to be a minimum tool list. It's going to be diagonal cutters, clines, strippers, all that stuff's on the list. Or they're going to sell you a kit. They're going to pull out of your text for like 20, 30 bucks a week. It's like $900, $1,200 of tools. It's going to include the drill, the sawzall, all the hand tools you need. Very generic, uh, some kind of tool belt, whatever it is. If you've already got some tools, you're going to want to dodge that kit. Because the kit that they're going to sell you is going to be the most basic tools. It's not going to be the journeyman series style handles you're not going to get the good handles like you could for 10 more bucks you can get the good handles 30 bucks is the whole tool you're spending 40 for something that's going to last you forever that you're not going to be buying twice so something How many, uh, what's up in that list that they give you uh, -huh. uh how many brooms do they offer zero brooms dude there's gonna be zero cleaning you're just gonna you're gonna leave your wire on the floor Leave your wire nuts, your bee caps, your red devils, your ground stingers, all that stuff goes on the floor. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And and when you strip your MC here with your roto slit, you want to make sure that you leave these especially on the floor. <laughs> if any of those guys that are walking around doing the walls are on the stilts. And they're walking around there, you know, they're good seven feet in the air. You want to make sure that they accidentally stand on one of these. So it just done. done. Yeah. They won't mess with you no more. That's what you do. You leave these around um, just like that. Little sections of pipe. Almost all that stuff is an electrician. really slippery for those guys, man. Leave, leave all that stuff out. Don't sweep nothing. Um, yeah. If you work for Beck, if you work for, there's a number of general contractors that will take your helper from you for the whole day on a Friday and they're going to make them clean the whole job site. Everybody. Use floor sweep, 
That's your job. You're picking up, you're sweeping. And every trade gives one of their helpers to this cause. So there might be 20 people that are only cleaning up all day on Friday. So the uh, electrician, they, they finish by what, oh, by what Thursday then? <laughs> <laughs> all my test screws on the floor with my wire nuts and small pieces of wire. Yeah, that's right. I actually yeah. carry little pieces of Lego block <laughs> in my tool bag. <laughs> I throw those around. Oh, that's great. All right. So in the tool list, they're going to give you some kind of bag that's capable of fitting your tools, hand tools, and your power tools. Now, your power tools minimum is going to be a reciprocating saw and a drill. If you think you're getting an impact on that kit, Yes, again, that's not going to be a known tool. It might be by now. I don't know. I haven't been in the field for a couple of years now running construction, but impacts is more of a luxury. Um, a drill, hammer drill, just a hammer drill, sorry. Hammer drill and a reciprocating saw is 100% required for electricians. Blind to you? Yeah. <laughs> so. Wow. Uh, this is where buying your own tools comes into play because as an electrician, almost everything is threaded for you. You don't need a whole bunch of torque. Most torque you're going to need, 12-volt tools can do the job. The drills can actually drill a one-inch hole in a four-square plate with a with a little 12-inch drill driver. Um, so you don't have to worry about power because even the Makitas can handle the task. So... And when you first start out, they probably will give you Makita because they have They're left over. Give you I, think, I think Milwaukee has pretty much taken over the trades by now. When I started, it was the NICAD DeWalt's. Uh, when I was in the middle of my career, nice. It turned into the, uh, the lithium ion DeWalt's. And then towards the end, they started giving out Milwaukee. <laughs> It makes you look cool. <laughs> All right, so we got our tool belt here. Klein makes one of these. Gator Bag makes one of these. Boulder Bag makes one of these. They're all fairly similar in nature. The benefit with the Gator Bag is that it's got the gators, of course, on the back where it breathes and the belt has uh, channels through it. But the biggest benefit is that these are attached to the belt. So no matter what tool pouches you have, you always have handles. So when you take this off, you have a handle to hold it with. And when you're done with it, you have two handles to carry. it. And this is the number one reason why I don't recommend vetoes and things like that. There's nothing wrong with a Vito bag. Vito makes a really good bag. They're going to last for absolutely ever. They're damn near bulletproof, but they're not for the job site. They're for technicians. They're for handymen. They're for service. They're for uh, industrial, things like that, because they're so rigid. This one zips up, so that's nice, and it's double-sided. We already went over why it's nice that it's double-sided <laughs> in the store. But um, they're, they're too rigid, so... You can just hear everything move around in here. The gang box on the job site, usually a, a large job box, big top, two locks. Everybody on the job site usually shares you know, like a community key. And everybody in that company has access to your tools. Um, it's nice that something like this zips up, but not very many vetoes do zip up. You can only fit about three or four tools in them because they take up so much room with their quality that there's no room for actual tools. That's that's the honest truth. It is what it is. Just the one um, holding it. They're, they're almost too rigid for their own good, so they're not going to form to the bottom of that box. And they don't they don't stack really well like this. This will kind of stack up, and you can smash this thing down, and you can crush this to make it fit into whatever you need to. A Vita bag or anything leather is just going to stay out like this. And that's where it lives. 
and you're never going to fit all these tools and the Vito bags in something like this. So keep in mind, high rises, you might park, you might park a block away, you might park three blocks away, you might park in the parking garage. You never know where you're going to be. You never know if the pack out's a good situation, what a good situation is. They're going to give you a bag that's going to fit your tools in it, and it's going to fit your drill and your sawzall. That's that's pretty much where I'm getting at here. And then you need something that's going to fit in the community gang box. So we got our tools here. Celebrity, uh, did you say a gang box? Yeah. That's my ex-wife. <laughs> nice. Oh, we make sure that's, that's part of the training. How yeah. to upset other trades. Use drywall screws for everything. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, let's talk about tools. Beating screwdriver. It's not going to be on the required tool list, but you're going to need a beating screwdriver. You're going to be expected to beat lock rings on, tighten lock rings, push lock rings. Whatever you're doing with lock rings, it's going to be the beating screwdriver. Knock knockouts, reach in the back of panels, knock things out without having to get your fingers all the way in there. You can see how rounded off this thing is, and that's what the screwdriver will be. You think barely works on screws. If you've got a nice screwdriver that you don't want to beat on, that's going to be the expectation of you when you show up on the job site without a beating screwdriver and your journeyman sitting over there like, hey, buddy, beat that lock ring on. And you're like, with my brand new Vera? Yes, with your brand new Vera. If you don't want to beat on your pretty tools, you need to have an ugly one to beat on. It's that simple. Beaters Ten screwdriver. One, uh, this is a little bit beyond a 10 and 1. I'm kind of fancy with my tools now, but 3 8 5 16 and quarter inch, all built in one. How often are you going to use these? Not that often. You're going to be using a 7 16 and 9 16 and a half inch for pretty much all of your career. You might wind up where you're going to put in a grounding screw in the back of a box, and it might help you to get the 5 16 but you're going to be throwing that on your impact at that point. So... You're not going to be using this as much for uh, Phillips and Flathead is, is what you're going to be using this for. You rarely ever have time to stop, pull out that Christmas tree arrangement of nut setters that Klein makes to get the perfect bit to, to select what you want to do. You're going to have something ready for everything, and you're going to grab it, and you're going to go. Nut setter? Sounds like an industrial electrician. Hunter Reamer. Oh, that's sitter, not setter. That's my fault. I misunderstood. I would hope by now Condor Reamer is going to be on the list. Uh, it's good for set screw couplings. It stops you from running off of the screw because it's indented back. So, And then Reamer's a conduit. I don't think they're liking my hat. I don't like your hat. Or my glasses. One. I, I mean, I'm, I'm the prop for this evening. <laughs> Uh, they're going to give you one level. Hopefully it's not plastic. Um, the level they used to give us was, uh, aluminum with the plastic on the sides of the client. So as soon as it hit the floor, it went, when all the biles went everywhere. That's perfect. Uh, I, I'm imagining they're going to give you something like this by now, but you're going to need two of them. You're going to need one for level, one for plumb at the same time. If you're bending conduit. If, if you've got, if you've got your conduit down here like this and your conduit made a 90 like this oh my goodness. and you're trying to stand this up down here while you got it in the connector down here and you're trying to make sure this is simultaneously level or whatever you're doing, you can see where you'd need two levels pretty quickly. You're probably not really going to use a stubby that you get into like Specific stuff, pole lights, things like that, smaller bonding bushings, more more specialty stuff. A uh, few pairs of channel locks, you got to have them. If you want to buy once and cry once, except for the fact they could get stolen, you're going to want to buy these. I've had this for the length of my career. 
Hey, your phone's ringing. That's because he loves you. I find this very interesting, sparky love. I need a oh beer to watch that. No one can utilize a stubby. Mrs. Tools and Tactics, you've been utilizing one for years. <laughs> yes. that, that could be my daughter. <laughs> All right. Tape measure. I said um, it was heavy. I I was more, it the minimum strapping was eight feet. Strap every eight feet. Coach says 10. You need a tape measure with at least a 10 foot standout. Whatever that is. For me, for years, it was something with a magnet on it. I got tired of getting all the dust off my magnets and just making a mess. Uh, I went with something that just has a straight standout. Plumbing. You're going to need a 25 footer though, because your journeyman's going to be carrying around the 16. And it's your job as a new guy to carry around the 25. So if we got to pull certain measurements off of string lines, and you don't have a 25, it's going to be your fault for not having the 25. Minimum, minimum tool here. Diagonal cutters, strippers, clines, flathead, Phillips, all that stuff is, is uh, essential, of course. Each of these tools I just mentioned is like 30 bucks a pop. So you do the math on that. It goes up pretty quick. Strippers are like 20. We're getting Sharpies. Can't have enough Sharpies. You're going to be everyone's best friend if you got a Sharpie. You're going to be your, your journeyman's because you're the helper. You're going to be your journeyman's best friend. And now these things have hooks on them for your hard hats because Milwaukee is really smart like that. Hang on. There we go. I don't know why that wouldn't go on to start with. You can see it right there. Uh, we used to use the MC clips, put them on there and get the thing. Th these are the way to go, man. Milwaukee really knows what they're doing whenever they're making stuff for the most part. Uh, this this is where you're going to live. You're going to live with, with the Sharpie on your hard hat. And you're going to live with these measurements. Write these down. No. The one thing you got to adjust to if you're going to be a, a sparky is looking stupid. The, yeah. Yeah, you're going to look dorky. All right. Uh, 10 degrees is 5. 15 is 4. 22 is 2.41. 30 is 2. 45 is 1.41. And 60 is 1.45. That's your offset measurements. So if you want to do a 30 degree offset, your multiplier is 2. So if we want our obstruction to be four inches, you're going to space your lines at eight inches and then bend that up. That's going to create a four inch offset. Uh, take those numbers. I'm not going to say them again. For your bend throws for your 881 table bender, your large table bender, two and a half is 21 and an eighth. Three inch is 24 and three quarters. Three and a half is 27 and four inch condo is 32 and a quarter. So your bend throw is 32 inches and a quarter of, of guaranteed bend. So when you got like a four inch pipe, your minimum length of your 90 is already three feet. And now you know. And now you know. Hard hat light. Uh, you're going to have a light and you're not going to want a flashlight in your pouch every time. You're going to want to put something on your head. That's rechargeable. It. it goes on here. This Klein one has a uh, actually has a built-in light for Klein. This looks ridiculous on here. Uh, let, me, let me at least. I mean, it. it could have been the button-down shirt with the hard hat, <laughs> but no. No, hey, you had that's, the extra that's, mile. That's what you wear. Uh. Trying not to uh, show the company I used to work for. There we go. Um, there we go. Yeah. I got my duct tape. Velcro is your friend. Get the double sided Velcro, stick it on one side, Velcro on the other, and go get a decent hard hat line. 
you're going to need it. You're walking to the Connex. The Connex is where you keep all your material. There's no lights in there. There's usually no power. You're going to be going in and out of different rooms. You're going to be changing the, the, the lighting as you walk around. You're going to want a light. What's Jeremy say? The thing is about doing commercial painting, no matter how many times the caution tape, even an electrician will end up in the front end. <laughs> That's facts right there, man. That is facts. I think I have just the perfect light. I, th I think this will work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. That's, that's what I need. <laughs> what do you guys think? Is this is this too bright? Is this just right? <laughs> so in this bag, not a required tool, but really nice to have. SDS drill, built-in bit, built-in five sixteenths for Tapcoms. And that's what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life, Tapcons. You're never going to see another type of fastener. You might see a tornado here or there, the metal ones. Uh, you might see a yellow ball anchor from time to time. For the most part, you're only ever going to see Tapcons. <laughs> and they work. The by, the way, by the way, the missus said she uses a four-inch pipe every night. <laughs> oh, okay. That was the one held for review. Uh, <laughs> I reviewed it and I approved it. <laughs> your needle nose are not going to be used as often as you think. Your needle nose are for cutting boxes, for your F clamps, for your sheetrock clamps. Uh, put the back of that F clamp against the back of the sheetrock and you bend those two clamps around, it turns into the, the F around to the face of the box. You're going to use this to kind of push into the back of the box with the clamp. That's pretty much all you're going to use these for. So you may believe them in your bag. You don't need to be carrying all these tools with you. Hey, the wife said it was it's four inches uh, wide and a half inch wide uh, long. So she she uh, protected your honor. She stood up for you. Oh, good. It's like a cup can. Yeah. Sweet. She did say you switched to Bud Light. Now, what is that about? <laughs> oh, man. That, that might be a buzzword. Get it? All right. This is a... Uh... Dang it. 916 is going to be pretty much the only thing you're ever going to use. 916, 3H hardware. Um, that's your nuts, your bolts, your, your 12 months, all that stuff. 916 is the most common. Three quarters is going to be for your half inch hardware. So, uh, seven sixteenths is for middle leg straps or your minis with with the nuts. So you're going to take your your uh, for the most part, you can take your whole just your finger and squeeze that mini shut and tighten the nut on there, or you can uh, get your channel lock, squeeze them together, and just hey. spin that nut on there. What's up? I'm about to make your video go viral right now. Are you ready? Uh, sure. We're a more inclusive stream. That's why we had we promote both Bud Light and Makita here. That's right. <laughs> inclusive. <All> right. <laughs> we, know, we know what this thing's called. I don't want to say the word. It's it's a half moon. A rasp. Just call it a rasp. It's a bastard file. You got flat on this side. You got curved on this side. Good for pipe. The rat tail is no good because you're going to start wearing grooves in your pipe uh, unless you keep that thing moving. This is this is what you want. Let me let me see which one this is there. <laughs> South you Your recip and you got your drill. Uh, they're going to get you a two-handed recip, probably guaranteed. Uh, OSHA is starting to move towards one-handed things like bandsaws. Milwaukee actually has a bandsaw that they made that requires two points of contact. If they're selling to all these companies around here, you have to grab the trigger on the um, on like the big knob portion of it, and then squeeze the trigger simultaneously. They're in series. So you can't. Uh, a lot of electricians will cheat. They'll put that 
they'll put that trigger on the end of a material cart or something. Yeah. And activate the trigger. And then they'll come down here with the trigger and their pipe and and get the cutting with one hand. But uh, a lot of stuff is getting implemented into one hand only. Uh, yeah. Hey, two hands, two hands or, or one handed resets. Did you hear Rodney's going back to 66 tomorrow? Last night to be 66, but who? Was By the way, a couple of guys that the new compact tools are available to order for Flex online. We appreciate it. I just haven't gotten to do a video on it yet. I, um, I don't know, man. That, that, who, who's got them? Is it Acme? Lowe's. Oh, Lowe's has them. Okay, that might be legit. Dude, Acme just hangs on to your money and your tools. Joshua Wilson says it is Acme. Yeah, dude, Acme, man. They're just going to keep delaying the tool until everyone else has it. They don't well, actually yeah. have it in stock. They'll take your money and they pretend like they ordered it for you today. But really, they're going to wait until they all come out and then they're going to start to order it. And then you're going to get it two weeks after the launch, which might still be sooner than, you know, than uh, other people, I guess you would say, but not sooner than if you go to the store on the day of the launch and actually pick up the damn pool yourself. Yeah. Um, the, it, that's true. But you have to remember that Acme is not quite as big as Home Depot or Lowe's. They don't have as many locations. Uh, but what they do have is a very active um, media. Like they update their website constantly. They let people know what's what's coming up uh, better than any other. The reason I don't do it is because last year when I announced tools that were coming out before the, the were an, they were official, I got a copyright strike. Yeah, I remember that too. That was a uh, that was pretty bad. And by the way, for the uh, attorney at Stanley Black and Decker, I want you to know I'm thinking of you and I wish you well and I hope you nothing but the best. Yeah. All right. Uh, multimeter. Grab a multimeter. You don't want an expensive multimeter for your first starting. The, the Kiwi's one for like 36 bucks is probably something that is good for a beginner. Um, it's easy to read. It does all the functions. You're never going to be using amperage on a construction site. Um, ever, 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 ever. Like, like hot work is done, dude. There, there is, there is zero uh, tolerance for that. So you can just kiss that goodbye. Um, if you happen to find something live before you work on it, it's a mile of paperwork. Uh, but you are going to be required of a multimeter. So I recommend something that you've always got on you. This clips onto your belt loop. It's small. It's cheap. And uh, it has non-contact voltage, which is good if you're running temporary. So if you're running temporary power, um, that's where you might run into something somewhat energized would be temporary because it's essentially freaking Romex just strung around extension cords. And you want to know, is that bulb burnt out or is it hot? Because people are going to constantly come to you as an electrician. They're going to see all the stuff. They're going to see that you got the hot stick here in your here in your uh, vest pocket. You're going to have a you have a hot stick. Every electrician does. Yeah. And they can see you have a hot stick, and they say, "Hey, my temporary is out." And then you're going to want to immediately see is that damn thing plugged in? Did the spider box trip? What happened to it? You can quickly identify fairly safely non-contact style to verify what you already knew. You're never physically going to put your leads on anything um, without a supervisor anyway. So, uh, Mrs. Tactics, you sound like a pimp. You make him go out and do the work, the hot work every night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make you lay that pimp hand down on him. <laughs> All right, so the expectations for you for your first day. Um, you're going to want to get there early. You're going to be driving your car. 
You're going to be paying all your tolls. You're going to be paying probably all your parking. Um, you're going to need to sign in. And you're going to need to get to the game box before, the, you know, the job sites, you know, the, the time start, starts. That's where you meet. Job box. You meet at the job box. Uh, <laughs> and there you're, going be, you're going to be laid out on what you're going to be doing. And you're going to be assigned somebody that's essentially over you. They might not be that much smarter than you. But they're going to be over you, and you're going to you're going to have to do whatever more or less they say. Um, it's almost like boot camp. You just you just put your head down and you do what you're told. Um, no matter how to meet you through many a jobs, no matter how much uh, how good it is, how much it sucks, or how much it blows, you're going to put your head down and just go to work. Yeah, pretty much. That's uh. <laughs> and, and you're going to want to keep your tools on you so you need to keep a tool belt on you that's where these come into play these smaller tool pouches are going to be a lifesaver because you can see here I'm, I'm, I've got all the tools that I need for the task you can swap them out, put them in your bag as you're going whatever you're doing you can always be carrying key to at least have a multimeter a pair of clients and a ten in one and a razor knife yeah. pencils and a sharpie with you at all times and this pouch weighs next to nothing you're carrying this around for 10 hours all day um you don't need to be carrying all these tools all day if this is all you have this is what you're carrying all day or you can kind of cheat the system a little bit and carry around the bare minimum but you're also going to, want to be able to fit this in your pouch pack outs are cool but they're also you know they're rollable, they walk off easy. Uh, might not have established the uh, electric room yet. Once you establish the electric room, that's pretty much like your headquarters. You lock that thing up and all your electrical stuff goes in there and all your tools will get locked in there and you can start leaving your tools overnight. But when you're going to lunch, if you're on the 15th story of a high rise and you're waiting for an elevator for 20 minutes, just to, you know, with, with the with the cog and wheel style, just like barely hanging on by one cog as you go up all the way. And and you're dragging your tools around everywhere you go, you're probably going to be late. So you're going to have to get used to trusting other people and leaving your tools on the job, unfortunately. By the way, I, I've been waiting to show this the whole time. All right, what you got? But uh, this is just too delicious. I have to do it because I'm so happy I picked this thing up yesterday. Because, so. uh, and this will this will remind the missus of uh, something she gets at home. It's a little four inch steel printing saw. Oh yeah, dude, that thing's pretty sweet. I love that thing. You, you should print us a two by four. Little oh, indicator to let you know how much powder battery you got. Is it kind of torque in your hand when you pull the trigger? No, um, but I can tell you this: yeah. it is stronger than that one I got last year from that lady. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I got. I don't know if I can find one. I just could create some pay to let him know that he's in. This uh, Fisher Price, yeah, they do look like Fisher Price. This one was uh, you can get it at Ace Hardware right now. It's sixty dollars off. Uh, it's down to one sixty nine. I want to say. So it's sixty bucks right now. Then. No, it's down sixty dollars to one sixty nine. Oh, oh, I saw. Okay, I saw a line where it was one sixty. I thought you took sixty dollars off of that. Nope. That still wouldn't be 60 bucks, so that's, that's good math. I mean, I get a discount, and they registered the tool for me. Hey, if you're showing cool stuff, I'm going to show cool stuff, too. Look at this hammer sleeve that I got from Tough Bill. Nice. Okay, they didn't send it to me. I got it from Amazon. I want to make that sure that's clear. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's actually a full-blown sleeve. It's not a stupid hook, and it clips on and off. And then it's got room for another pry bar or razor knife or whatever. It's kind of cool because uh, most of my rigs are set up for electricians, so you don't have a good hammer sleeve. You just got that stupid hook, and then you got to, you know, 
it's always constantly swinging way more than it should. So I know my my hammer swings constantly. It's yeah, well, horrible. I'm not used to all that. Some, some of us can't get that lucky, but it, it hits me in the knee. a little bit from time to time. It hits me in the knee. It's it's really disturbing. You just got to coil it around your leg, coil it around your what, shoulder, and then back what's out. What's funny is I actually bought this to put on my lawnmower so that when I go under trees and stuff, I can prune SMO. Oh, that's cool. And I don't pick up any of the branches, folks. I leave them on the ground and just ride over them with the mower, and I don't care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so... Does this one pivot? It doesn't look like it does pivot. That'd be cool if I kind of made this somewhat pivot. What Jeremy said, that might be... Or... Oh, it's already gone. I think I have to scroll up. That's what Jeremy said. He prefers the second pivot. Yeah, that's good insight. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so... Um... What you're going to be expected is just, I mean, to be helpful and stay busy. Uh, try to figure out what they're going to do next, what they're going to need next. Um, if you're running pipe, and you just put a coupling on the end of the pipe, you know the pipe is coming up next for a strap. What or, are you doing on the end of the pipe? If you put a coupling on the end of the pipe, you know that you're going to very quickly need a strap pretty soon, or you're going to need another piece of pipe. If you're running on scissor lift and it's you, and him up there, and you got a you got a 15 foot long scissor lift, and he's on one side, and you're on the other side, and you can't reach each other because you got the damn tie off things where you only go six feet, so no one can actually reach the middle of the freaking lift. Oh, it comes with a holster. That's cool. Didn't come with it, but they gave it to me. That's cool. Purchased out of my own pocket. But yeah. I asked for a discount and a holster, and they gave it to me. Never hurts to ask. That's pretty cool. See? But I'm yes, literally going to, uh, just try to in, in your honor, next. in your honor, I am going to strap the holster onto my mower. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, go on with your uh, go on with your discussion there. Sorry. You don't actually harness yourself to the lift. Yeah, yeah. There's tie offs. You're not allowed to tie off. Yeah, that's what doesn't make sense to me, right? So first off, anything above six feet, you got to tie off. So we already know that if if the if the hang on, do I have one here? Nice I've got job, a yeah. number. Hang on. Hang on, I think it's in it. What knee pads do you wear when you go for the discount? I'm fortunate I'm bigger than most guys, so they put the knee pads on. <laughs> Sorry, you don't have that experience. You are Canadian after all. Let me ask you, in your two, two weeks of uh, summer, do you guys talk about heat making it grow? Because you're always in the cold. <laughs> uh, so I'm just talking about it. I had my texted here for a second. I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, no. Um, yeah, so you you actually you harness off to the lift. You harness off to whatever. So even if you're on a six-foot platform... Your harness is four foot long, and then on the brake, it extends another however many feet. You still have to tie off, even though you're going to hit the freaking floor. So you tie off to your lifts. You tie off to um, all that stuff. There's tie-off points. You don't tie off to the angle iron. That would make too much sense. That way, to lift fail, you'd think that you'd want to hang on the angle iron, but you don't. You go down with the ship like a man. <laughs> I don't understand yeah. it. You you want to hang on like a dingleberry. Yeah. And hope you don't get wiped out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, boom, tie off to all that stuff. For some reason, if you got to step off on a platform, you're going to have a double tie off. So you got to have uh, two hooks. 
one for staying hooked onto the lift. Then you step onto the platform, you hook onto whatever the heck tie-off point you got, and then you go back to the lift, you untie off there. It's 100% tie-off. Um, yeah, and you gotta you gotta wear that harness, you know, as long as you're on the lift. You don't throw anything off the lift ever, ever, ever. Um, there's there's a lot of things that go into uh, the construction, you know, commercial aspect of it. You don't use a you can't use a grinder unless you're a welder, and then you've already submitted hot work permits. You submit one hour fire watch. If you've shot any sparks, there's going to be a one hour fire watch. So as an electrician. Um, even that cutoff tool that everyone advertises, though it's great for electricians, not on, not, not in commercial. There's too many rules and regulations behind all that. So, uh, reset blades should get supplied to you. Uh, tape will get supplied to you. Hole saws, quarter inch drill bits for your pilot bits. Uh, arbors. On some case, in some cases, extensions. Uh, that's about it. We have four weeks of summer, and two of them you cannot go outside because the hole in the ozone. Yeah, stopped reading that just in time. The same thing at a fire security pair, handprints. Nice. Um, that is uh. That's about it. Your whole your whole saw, your key hole saw. Where is it? Where's your key hole saw? Now you don't carry a grinder, but it helps if you're on a grinder. Key hole saw, you're almost never gonna use this. If you're cutting sheetrock, you, you done effed up. Um you don't Maybe if you're doing a remodel job, do a remodel at a church. There's a bunch of existing sheetrock. You have to cut in a couple of boxes here or there. That's a little bit different. Um, in the uh, 11 years that I worked for that company, only once that I run into a job. You're talking probably six to seven jobs a year. Big jobs. Um, do you don't. You don't really use these. Maybe if you're cutting can lights in uh, ceiling tile, you might use one of these, but this is going to stay in your bag. You're going to have to keep this on you. So you got to have a bag with you, but you're not really ever going to use this. This is one of those tools that goes in your bag. There's going to be a couple of tools that just stay in your bag that you never really use. That's why uh, you're, you're going to want something like this. You're going to want a 12 volt tool that's light, that get the job done, you'll be running a bunch of self-tappers in the metal boxes, um, bar brackets, uh, MC straps, all that stuff. All your stud walls are going to be metal for the most part. So you're running self-tappers into just about everything to secure it to the wall. You're going to be going through your P2 bits. You're going to want something very magnetic. You, you can't do without a magnet in this case. It has to be magnetic. So... I like these because they're super magnetic. Since since I've gotten out, they've came out with better, straighter bits that don't have to pivot to get just as magnetic. But you're going to need something very magnetic to keep that screw on there while you're trying to do whatever you're trying to do. Nice, George. I have a question. Aluminum ladder, Sparky. Hmm. Yeah, no aluminum ladders. They're all going to be fiberglass. You're not going to have any paint on your ladders. You're not going to have anything on your ladders. They're going to be pretty well kept. You can pretty much slide them on your arm, and they're not going to give you fiberglass splinters like uh, so, some of the ladders you've probably seen before, you borrowed, whatever you ran into. They're going to be newer, well-kept ladders. Um, Benches are going to be supplied by the company. What do you use to get the mud out of the box after the finisher fills half with mud? Um, man, we usually leave so much wire in the box anyway. It doesn't even matter. Um, you typically don't run into that, man. Everybody, for the most part, tries to work together because a patch is 100 bucks. Sounds like a lot of money. They got to, first they got to cut whatever because they do all the cutting. So if you need to move something, they want to do the cutting. So they got to show up to cut. 
Then they got to wait for you to install it. Then they got to screw the sheetrock back on. Then they got to mud it and tape it. Then they got to sand it. They probably got to tape it again, actually. Mud it. Then they got to sand it. Then they got to mud it again. Then they got to sand it. Then they got to prime it. Then they got to paint. They got to visit it like 12 times. So um, if you're cutting sheetrock, it's a bad deal. 100 bucks a patch adds up real quick. If you piss them off, they'll one side you though. I get contractors ask me all the time, hey, you mind if I one side? And I know it's screwing the electricians. I'd be like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Depends who they are. Sometimes they won't let them one side, but so they'll try to get one side of the sheetrock up. So then you have to walk around both sides of the wall as you're trying to do your work. Or if you got an MC connector and you're just trying to get that one last piece of MC in that box, it's almost impossible because you're on the back side of the box and the freaking the, the, the washer needs to go on the inside of the box. So you can't just, you know, reach around and tighten that thing. You got to walk over on the wall or have a helper hold that thing or whatever it is. So it just gets crazy. Man, I've, I've hurt my back so much. I have to get a help, a helper to hold my tool. <laughs> You're going to wind up about three or four of these bags, bits, blades, all kinds of stuff. Um, the canvas bags are going to be your best friend. And then last but not least, you're going to wind up with a wrench. Your wrenches are going to be pretty much the only wrench you're going to need is a 916. And you're going to want it to pivot. It helps if it pivots. Definitely has to ratchet for your 916. And I'm going to highly recommend you get this. This is a four-sided box wrench. Gear wrench makes it... Uh, Craftsman made one, all black. Uh, the the ratchet actuator is on the side instead of up here. This is all the sizes that you need. It's got the seven sixteenths, and it's got the half. When you get into stretch straps that are larger than an inch and a quarter, your stretch strap bolt changes from three eighths and half inch, and then your seven sixteenths is for your quarter inch hardware. So this thing acts like a socket because it protrudes off the end of the wrench. So what you might run into on a standard wrench is that everything is really flush and it's harder to stay on that bolt because of the area around the nut it's, and, and the taper comes in on that mineral relax strap. It's hard to keep this on there without being at an angle. This thing sits on it perfectly. I, I don't think there's ever been a better tool made for tightening stretch straps. <clears throat> Husky has one as well. There you go. Yeah, the, these are fantastic. Uh, I've looked them up for like 70 bucks now. Hey, that tool sits on the nut perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I heard. All right. <laughs> uh, you gotta have a knife, razor knife, whatever. Keep it on you all the time. Don't ever not have your razor knife. Um, metal tin snips is something that you're probably never gonna use. Uh, maybe occasionally, but for the most part, you shouldn't need that. Uh, they're gonna supply all of your brackets, all of your, everything that's to mount a box. You shouldn't be having to fabricate studs. If so, that's what your recips cause for. Smarties would be safer if all you just wore rubber boots and velcro, 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 velcro gloves. Is that kind of like a uh, Nomex on the gloves? Husky's under thirty. Yeah, there you go, Kansas. Good, good call. Um, this was on Amazon. You might be able to find your range is still at Lowe's, right? What's that? Your range is still at Lowe's, right? Uh, no. Well, yeah, I'm not, they don't have a very big presence. They're growing into more of the Napa and Home Depot right now. Oh, Gear Ranch is going to Home Depot. Uh, yeah, they've been at Home Depot for uh, two years now. Oh, okay, cool. Like, you, you don't have to buy all this stuff when you have this ranch, so it's very not often that I look at Home Depot. Before you go out and you buy a whole kit, 
like this. As an electrician, you're only going to be using a 7 16 a half inch, a three quarter, and a 9 16. That's pretty much it. So you spend 20 bucks per wrench and you get one that pivots, that also locks and pivots. That way, if you're trying to mount beam clamps in the corrugates above the roof, you can angle this head down flat and keep your knuckles away from the corrugates as you try to tighten that beam clamp inside there. It's pretty much the only thing that's going to get that job done. The other thing, the bigger wrench, the uh, the other four-sided one, I don't know exactly where it is. Uh, it's got a 5 8 so your 3 8 beam clamps that are like the bigger square ones. Which people love to use for bonding. I always see, I always see a bonding lug on a beam clamp when they're trying to ground the building. It's terrible. Um, anyway, those are five eighths, and they're a thirteen point socket. I think that's right. Thirteen, right? Twelve. Twelve point, right? Twelve, sir. Twelve. Twelve point uh, fits perfectly on the square nuts that they use because the nuts are actually square. All beam clamps, the nuts are square. Three eighths fits on the quarter inch on this. Five eighths fits on that larger square nut for the beam clamps. And that's a lifesaver, man. You'll wind up buying yourself a five eighths socket to put on a three eighths adapter with your impact to tighten those beam clamps sometimes, depending on how much you're doing. It'll, it'll save you. Uh, refrigeration wrench also is uh, for those smaller that square fits perfectly on those two packs of four size wrenches and two wrenches rushing at lows, currently 26 gear wrench. There you go. Yeah. Uh, that's what these used to cost was 30 bucks, but they used to come with the bits and the adapter that went in here to turn this into quarter inch, which was good for uh, bonding pushings. But I can never keep track of the dang thing, so I only ever really managed to keep track of the wrenches. Just for Howie. You look like a coal miner for me. No, you look like a oh, coal miner. That's all right. He's spelunking sphincters. That's what he wears the hat for. Your Allen wrenches. Um, where are my Allen wrenches? I think they're in the other room because I was using a whole slope. Set screws. And... Nice boss, man. You're going to want that small set of Allen wrenches that folds for your hole saws. Um, yeah. Every once in a while, you'll wind up with some kind of weird fixture uh, at the final stages that takes an Allen wrench. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all you're going to be needing your Allen wrench for is, is hole saws. You're going to be surprised how often you're breaking a quarter inch bit, um, especially when you first start out. So I'd recommend you put a washer over your hole saw first. That way your washer spins free and the hole saw stays stationary. I did a video on that. Um, I don't know what I called it, but I've, I've got videos on it. Uh, pull the hole saw off and just run quarter inch holes first. Get your margins. You know that a three eighths uh, hole saw is an inch and an eighth. Sorry, not three eighths. Three quarter hole saw is an inch and an eighth trade size. So you divide inch and eighth by two, figure your lines on each side of that, figure where your hole is going to be, turn into a square, put an X in the middle, get your spacing for your conduit spacing whenever you're running your racks, and then measure accordingly. Drill all your quarter inch holes first, then come back with your hole saw. Uh... Why do I need branches to have a cobra? Nothing beats the speed of this. The Cobra will do it, but nothing beats the speed of this. It's too fast. Nice rag. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing, man. Half of half of the electrical isn't actually electrical. It's it's installing the stuff the electrical is going to sit on. It's planning your pipe row, and it's it's putting straps in the wall. It's it's all that stuff. If you know where your pipe runs, you're going to go run all your straps first. Then come back, start setting your pipe in. It's a lot faster. You don't have to think about it. You already know what your run's going to do. You've already planned out your run, so you already know what you're going to run into as you get up to it. Um, there's a lot of tips and tricks to uh, 
being productive. I'll show you speed. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's all I got time for, man. It's a uh, 22 minute Tuesday. So we're going to cut it off at an hour. <laughs> uh, appreciate the brevity for the evening. I have I, not been feeling well today. I got a, uh, I got more spray foam coming tomorrow. The, the good stuff. And I expose more walls. We have a beam that's pretty much in half. Um, maybe Thursday, we'll see. Maybe I can do an actual video, an actual live where I have sound. And you can see the spray foam. We'll see. I got 12 more cans, like 230 bucks. Uh, we got to do more. We got to keep going. I got to put in a 16 foot uh, support beam, too. So, if you want to watch that, let me know. <laughs> The funny part is, she's the one wearing the hard hat. <laughs> one of them should be hard. <laughs> There's one more thing I was going to say before we go. South Park can't lose any. And it was about Allen wrenches, but I don't have one here as an example. But uh, it, it, it goes in line with um, being prepared and having the tools. Yeah, you're spending money. Yeah, you're not going to be using those tools yet. But if you have the tools, you're more likely to get picked for that task. So if you don't know jack crap about nothing, and you're the only helper with the tools to do it, chances are you're going to get to do that. So if you have the tools for what you want to do, if you'd rather not pick up trash and run MC, and you already have a roto split, I don't know where I put it now. You already have one of these? Chances are they're going to let you run MC. Whether you know how to or not, you got the tool to do it. You made the initiative, you're going to get rewarded on it. And being an electrician, there's there's a culture that goes along with it. And hard work is rewarded. Whether or not you get recognized in the company for your hard work, uh, on the other side of the job where corporates knows what who actually did what. But for the most part, there's a lot of loyalty. Um, there's not so much backstabbing. There's not so much uh, high school BS, man. Everyone, Everyone's doing the same task. Everyone pretty much trusts everybody with their tools. Um, it's, it's a different kind of culture. And if you've got what you've got, you, you're, you're rewarded based on your value because we're trying to get this thing done. So uh, whenever someone shows up on the job site, even if they're better than you, you're just glad they're there to help get the freaking job done. Because half the time they're pushing you, you don't have time to get anything done. They already got unrealistic deadlines. Everyone wants something for free nowadays. You're almost bidding the job at cost just to keep your guys busy, not even to make a profit anymore. If you can break even and you paid all your guys and everyone was able to eat, that's still a win. Whether you made money or not, you stayed at zero. That's a win. So um, that's that's my two cents on that. The Allen wrenches for your three eights and stuff, your uh, your larger breakers, um, the larger breakers, what else do you do? Polaris lugs, things like that is where you're going to run into your longer Allen wrenches to go on your sockets. Those are good to have too. You never know when you're going to need those and those can double as uh, trading out for your whole sauce. So if you don't want to if you don't want to buy two sets of Allen wrenches or whatever, just get get you a long set of Allens. It's not as hard to find the stuff as it was 15 years ago. Comedy politics are the worst. My place is terrible and it has taken so much of my energy just to dodge. Yeah. I, I do have to respond to something Joshua said. He said, I'm going to bring six to eight full box packouts and tell them I'm ready to do it all. They knew you were ready to do it all long before you entered the pack out game. <laughs> but if you show up with pack outs, they may pay you this time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think the uh 
pretty much everyone's going to pack out. And you'd be surprised how many guys don't actually have trucks. Pretty much everybody has a sedan, um, some kind of car, tool bags and, and belts. Uh, everyone's just as broke as you are. And they're all building it together. So that's what it is. Uh, I like I like that this man said that they have a strong community and everybody trusts everybody and all this. This is the same man that put pink zebra tape on his tools so they know, so no one borrowed them. <laughs> <laughs> you can identify them. There's a certain level of trust you got to go, but if you're not making the extra miles to make a difference and make your tools set apart. And your name's not on them, man. It's 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 fair game. I mean, it's it really is. It's it, there is that. So there are people that are going to steal your tools, even even in your even in your company. So yeah, that's why I have pink zebra tape on just about everything I had. You can see it a mile away, but everyone knew it was mine. Yeah. the The other thing you can do is uh, just put your tools in a Makita bag, and no one will touch it anyway. Yeah, yeah, that works too. Just uh. That's actually what I did here. See, I keep my uh, my emergency tools in this Nikita bag. Oh, if anyone breaks into my car, I've always got my emergency tools. <laughs> they sell the Nikita bag, and they just leave them alone. They probably leave you money. Sorry we <laughs> broke into your car. Thought you had good stuff. Saw a Nikita bag. <laughs> Here's so, for hey, the repair. In Milwaukee. <laughs> Here's for the repair. <laughs> All right, you got anything else? No. Cool. Appreciate you guys. I'm ill today, so I'm going to go lay down. Well, hope you get to feeling better. Smart gum, Makita. Yeah. Oh, and an apprentice. Makita, guys. Brand new trucks and old hands are driving the old compact feeder. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah the guys that are driving the old compact feeder are the only ones making money. The, the, the apprentice is typically, typically it's going to be like, uh, it's going to be like this. You're going to be younger as an apprentice and your mom or your grandma, that's, that's what it looks for me as a grandma. And she wanted to buy me everything. She's like, just get whatever on the list because they're trying to help. And uh, hopefully this will prevent you guys from spending a whole bunch of unnecessary money. Don't, don't buy their toolkit unless you don't have anything. That's pretty much the uh, the takeaway on that. And or, unless you work for the government, you can't spend your way out of debt. <laughs> Men's work brass for marking tools don't wear off edges into the plastic. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a good idea, too. New Apprentice makes thirteen fifty two an hour, missed two days a week, and has this is for sure payment. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, the company that I'm recommending my friend to work for, I believe, starts at $16 an hour. So that's here in Texas in the Metroplex. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you guys have trouble um, finding a job, reach out to me on email. We'll see you guys later. Don't forget, blow them like you know them. If you're a Makita guy.